you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to Pointless, the game where you are always aiming for the lowest score. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hello, Alexander. Hello, Richard. Uh, my name is Ed. This is my brother, Alex, and we're both from London. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Dave. This is my wife, Mira, and we're from Southampton. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Daisy. This is my dad, Bruce, and we're from Surrey. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Courtney. This is my sister, Lauren, and we're from Wiltshire. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. Very warm welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have you with us. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. Yes, he's intimidating, but remember, he still puts his trousers on one leg at a time, then takes them off and sits behind his desk <laughs> and co-hosts a popular BBC One quiz show. It's my Pointless friend, it's Richard. Hiya, everybody. Hello, everyone. How lovely to see some returning pairs. Mira and Dave, welcome back. Through to round two last time. Courtney and Lauren, through to the head-to-head -head last time as well. Welcome to our two new pairs. And Ed said hello to me, if so few people do. So few. I mean, listen, we mustn't encourage it because those introductions will start going on for ages. But once in a blue moon, oh, it's, it's nice. nice. You know, makes me feel like somebody cares. Yeah. <laughs> you know anyway, what I mean? Um, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Still talking, sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, there we go. Thank you very much indeed. Joe and Andy got through to the jackpot round last time and I'm afraid they failed to pick up the jackpot. So we are adding another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £4,500. Yeah, right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. Just remember at all times that it is the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated. So you can avoid being eliminated by keeping your scores nice and low. It is as simple as that. Um, very, very best of luck to everybody. Our first category this afternoon is... Cinema. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Jay's in film titles, Richard. Mm, on each board, we're going to show you the titles of seven movies. Uh, we missed out one word from each of the movie titles, and that word begins with J, but what is it, please? Seven on the first board, seven on the second. Thank you very much indeed. So we are looking for the missing J words from these movie titles, and here they come. Here's our first board of seven. Born on the 4th of blank, Tom Cruise, 1989. Blackboard, blank, Glenn Ford, 1955. Blank. Rock, Elvis Presley, 1957. Blank Rabbit, Scarlett Johansson, 2019. Pal Blank, Frank Sinatra, 1957. Blank All the Way, Arnold Schwarzenegger, 1996. And Star Wars, Episode VI, Return of the Blank, Mark Hamill, 1983. There we are, Alex. Welcome to Pointless. Good to have you here. Tell Thank us you. all about yourself. Uh, I am 28 and I'm a shipbroker from London. I think you're a very good broker. Stop <laughs> doing yourself down. <laughs> I, try to say, I try to say it very carefully. Ship. Ship broker. Excellent. Excellent. Do you... <laughs> <laughs> I, um, where do you do your ship broking? Uh, near Green Park. OK. So you are sending uh, ships I'm all around the, the world? Kind of the very lowly middleman between much more important people, either with pretty big ships or with cargoes. So it's mainly kind of coal, iron, grain. Well, I mean, this is a, as old as trade itself, isn't it? Uh, I mean, shipbroking yeah. kind of... I mean, do you feel like you're working in an ancient... Yeah, I mean, I think I should probably be better at it, considering the same people have gone beforehand. Yeah. Um, but, it, yeah, no, it's a cool job, knowing you kind of... Something physically happens when you... Uh, Absolutely. ...when you try and do a deal that happens once in a blue moon. Yeah, yeah. it's not the sort of mysterious... Trade, no, it's, electronic trade, exactly. it's actual it's something stuff. physical. Yeah, exactly. Now, Alex, what are you going to go for on our board? Um, I was I was quite confident when cinema came up, but I'm definitely feeling a lot less confident. I think I'll go for the Elvis Presley and go with Jailhouse Rock. Jailhouse Rock, says Alex. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Jailhouse. Jailhouse is right, 77 is what it scores. Right. This is right. Uh, he swallowed the cap of a tooth during the filming of that and they thought it was going to affect his uh, singing voice forever. It went into his lungs. But it no. didn't. He was fine in the end. Turns out it was great. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Uh, there we go. Thank you. Now, Mira, welcome back. Thanks. Good to have you with us again. Remind us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, so, I work as a genetics doctor and in my spare time, which I don't have much of because we've got two young kids at home, um, but I really enjoy reading fiction. That's good. When do you read, generally? In the evenings when the kids are yeah. asleep, yeah. if they sleep. <laughs> yeah. I find as soon as we had kids, 
I would read at night before turning the light out, and then the next night I had to go back about three pages <laughs> and read, just because I could never quite remember. Yeah, um, but the last book I read actually was The Thursday Murder Club, and I really enjoyed it. Oh, <laughs> that's very kind, yeah. thank you. Thank you, I hear it's very good. It is, <laughs> oh, you should read it. Now, Mira, what are you going to go for? Uh, uh, there's two or three I know, but I think they're all reasonably obvious. I think I'm going to go for Jingle All The Way. Jingle? Yep. Jingle. Let's see how many of our 100 people said jingle all the way. You're absolutely right. 77 is the only score we have at the moment, and you passed it. 58 for jingle all the way. Well played, Mira. I've said this before, certainly on Twitter, but jingle bells is, should have a comma. It's jingle bells rather than a bell, you know, a type of bell. It's an instruction to the bell. It is, I suppose, yes. Yeah. Jingle bells. Yeah. Jingle bells. Like God rest you merry gentlemen, which is God rest you merry. Gentlemen. So the gentlemen aren't merry, the rest oh, is yes. merry. Yes, I thought it was God rest you, as in God rest you, have a lovely time, merry people. But maybe no. not. God rest you, merry. Mm. Ah. Huh? Not just a not just a clever author. <laughs> There's a couple of things about a couple about of that. Christmas tunes. Yeah. Okay, there we are. Now, Bruce, welcome. Lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. I'm 54, I'm a journalist, um, I work in sports journalism, and when I'm not working, I'm watching sport or trying to play sport. And very occasionally I watch a film, but they never have the letter J in the title. No, I, will, I make a point of never seeing films with, with certain letters in the alphabet in their titles. So what, um, obviously sport is a great love of yours. What a lovely job then. It is, um, yeah. To be immersed in the thing you love. What are your outlets? Where do you do your journalism? Um, a a well-known race. Well, I hope it's fairly well-known race in newspaper and website. So that's, okay, that's right. what I work for. I've worked see. for them for the last 23 years. So is it largely on the race courses that you are to be found? Uh, I actually do a bit... Uh, sometimes it's horse racing and... and and actually at the track, but I also now am working in all the stuff that we cover that doesn't involve four-legged animals, so more football and cricket and golf, that kind of thing. Interesting. OK, now, Bruce, uh, what are you going to go for? I'm struggling here. Um, I'm wondering whether I might actually be able to give an answer that is 100 for the first time, um, because I'm really struggling. I'm going to have to go Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi. Well, it'd be interesting to see how far down the column that goes. Return of the Jedi, says Bruce. There we are. Alex very much hoping it's higher than 77, and it is, I'm afraid, 81, Return of the Jedi. Uh, yep, damage limitation, really, isn't it? It's all, all big scores here. Uh, some of that was filmed here, right? In this very studio. Absolutely, right Very here. studio. <gasps> and do you know the, the uh, dressing room I am in has not been changed since? <laughs> <laughs> There's still, exactly. like, Wookiee yeah. costumes drying yeah. on, the, uh, yeah. on the rail. There we are. Thank you very much indeed. Courtney, welcome back. Thank Lovely you. to have you with us again. Remind us all about yourself. Um, I study psychology at the University of Greenwich um, and I'm also part of the netball team. Very good indeed. And uh, what, are your, what are your interests outside sport and work? Um, I quite like art. I'm not sure how good I am at it, but I quite like, you know, sketching. Well, that's the important She's thing. She's very good. Now, Courtney, you are the last person to have this board. Do you want to talk us through it? Um, I think I know one. Um, the top one. I think it's July. Um, and I could guess the Scarlett Johansson one, and I think I guess Jessica, but I don't want to risk it. Um, or do I risk it? No, I don't want to get 100. Um, I think I'm going to say born on the 4th of July. Born on the 4th of July. Yeah. OK, well, let's find out how many of our 100 said that. Right, 88 are born on the 4th of July. Yeah, some big scores coming up here. Um... Now, let's look at Rabbit next, because it isn't Jessica Rabbit, although 24 of our 100 said Jessica Rabbit, 13 of our 100 said Jack Rabbit. It's also not mm. Jack Rabbit. Jojo Rabbit. Jojo Rabbit is the answer. Yeah, Oscar-winning film. Would have scored 13 points. Blackboard? That I don't know. Jungle. Ah. Oh. Blackboard Jungle would have scored 29. And Pal? Pal Joey. Pal Joey, yeah. That would have scored 26. So Jojo Rabbit, the best answer on the board. Well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed. Well, let's take a look at the scores. We're halfway through the round. Wow, look at that. 58, Mira. Best score of the pass. Uh, very well done, as it turns out. 77 is where we find Alex and Ed. 81 is where we find Bruce and Daisy. Then 88 is where we find Courtney and Lauren. You're not wildly ahead, but a little bit. So, Lauren, new board. Try and find the nice, low-scoring answer on that, and that should keep you in the game. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put seven more film titles up on the board. We are looking for the missing words that begin with the letter J in each case. 
We have got Full Metal Blank, Matthew Modine, 1987. Blue Blank, Kate Blanchett, 2013. Dr. Blank and Mr. Hyde, Frederick March, 1931. Blank Ascending, Mila Kunis, 2015. Letters from Iwo Blank, Ken Watanabe, 2006. The Blank Singer, Al Jolson, 1927. And Blank League, Ben Affleck, 2017. All those blanks begin with the letter J. Uh, Lauren, welcome back. Tell us more about yourself. Well, I study creative writing at Bath Spa University. That's really all. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. That is all I have to say. Um, what do you think you're going to do? Um, well, I know Dr and Mr Hyde, and I think I know Ascending. I don't know if I want to risk it. Well, you're the high scorers, Lauren. You know what I'd say. Yeah, uh, I think Jupiter Ascending, I think. I'm going to go for. You're going to say Jupiter Ascending? I think. Let us see where we end up. No red line views, you're the high scorers. Um, how many people said Jupiter ascending? <laughs> 43. Yeah. Very well done indeed. Lowest score of the round so far takes your total up to 131. Yeah, I think you made the right choice there. Uh, also starring uh, Channing Tatum, that movie uh, got quite bad reviews. Eddie Redmayne won Worst Supporting Actor in the Razzie Awards for it. A proud achievement, yeah. that, isn't it? I mean, some people have won Worst and Best. Yes, so and some people have turned up and picked up their Razzie as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Eddie, I'm guessing, didn't. I wouldn't have thought so. I don't think I would. I don't think no. so, no. no. But you can only style that out so yes, far. Yes, exactly. Can't you? Um, Daisy, welcome. Uh, tell us all about yourself. I'm 20. I currently work on a meat and fish counter at a supermarket, but I'm going to university to be a paramedic in September. To study being a paramedic or to be the paramedic? To study paramedic science. Oh, I see. Right. Oh, seriously, there's a difference, you see. A nice difference, but a difference nonetheless. Uh, meat and fish, wh wh which do you prefer? Hard they hitting. both smell. Um... <laughs> One smells a bit more lingeringly than the other, I'd say. Yeah, um, I don't know, because, you know, fish is a, a bit cleaner. I so I'd probably go with fish. You go with the fish. I know. Okay. Shocker. Uh, Daisy, you're on 81. Currently, 49 or less gets you into the next round which means we've got to go down a, a level from the, the, the general level of answers we were getting in the first pass. Yeah, I only knew two and one of them was Jupiter Ascending. <laughs> um, I'm trying to come up with guesses for the rest of them, but I, I don't even know any, so I'm going to have to really hope that someone gets one wrong and go for Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. OK, Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. There's your red line. Another big score. 86 takes your total up to 167. Yeah, and Frederick March won the Best Actor Oscar that year for his portrayal of both of those characters. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Now, Dave. Hello. Welcome back. Uh, remind us all about yourself. Uh, I'm a civil engineer um, and in my spare time, as well as uh, running and swimming, I'm a, a big supporter in rugby. I support the Bristol Bears. Uh, How are the Bristol Bears doing in rugby? Well, I think it's fair to say historically we've, we've not been we've been less than impressive, but it's quite an exciting time to be a Bristol Bears fan at the moment, actually, yeah. because we start to get quite good. Well, coming out of the woods. <laughs> yes, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, now, Dave, there you are on yeah. fifty-eight. Uh, you are through to the next round. Even if you score hundred, you will not overtake Daisy and Bruce's high score, okay. which is nice to know. But I have a feeling you'll have a good answer. Up oh, up one of those yeah. is screaming out at me. Um, so, so. Back in the day, before kids, we used to have one of those um, cars you have and you go to the cinema as much as you want, you know? <gasps> that was great. Brilliant. And I think we went to see this film with Kate Blanchett in, I think if memory serves me correctly, it's called Blue Jasmine. Blue Jasmine. Blue Jasmine. Uh, no red line for the lovely reason that you're already through. Let's see how far down the column we get with Blue Jasmine. Oh, it's very good. Look at that, down to five, Dave. That's very impressive indeed. It takes your total up to 63. Well played, Dave. A good film as well. Woody Allen uh, film. And Kate Blanchett won Best Actress Oscar for it. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Richard, Ed, welcome. Uh, you've been waiting patiently all this time. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, I'm an education consultant, uh, so I help mostly international families who are looking to move to the UK uh, find schools for their kids. Very good. So this involves quite a lot of travelling around and I imagine quite a lot of being buttered up. 
it, it, yeah. uh, sometimes. I mean, it, I they they do more of the travelling. I think lots of lots yeah. of things were online before uh, could be done on on calls and Zoom anyway. So it's it's adapted quite well. I was going to say, are you a bit like the Queen, where you think everywhere smells of fresh paint? <laughs> the schools only show me certain rooms sometimes. Okay. I feel. Okay. Okay. Very good. Now, Ed, look, you're on 77, 89 or less gets you through. Do you feel like mopping up here, filling in all our blanks? I actually think I can. I, I do not envy the first board because I think it was it was tough. Uh, I, so the first one, I think, is Full Metal Jacket, uh, Letters from Iwo Jima. Uh, I think it's the jazz singer. And then Justice League, I think I'm going to go for Letters from Iwo Jima. OK, Jima, says Ed. Letters from Iwo Jima. There's your red line, lovely and high. Let's see how far down the column we get. It's right, you're through. Look at that, down against 29. Very, very well done indeed. 106 is your total. Well played, Ed. Clint Eastwood movie. And the best answer, you knew all of them, you got them all right, and that's the best answer you could have gone for as well. So couldn't have done any better than that. Full Metal Jacket would have scored you 82. The Jazz Singer would have scored you 55. And Justice League would have scored you 52. Thank you very much indeed. Well, that brings us to the end of our first round and means we have to say goodbye to our first pair. Oh, Daisy and Bruce, I'm sorry. High score of 167. They were tough, boys. Do you think if you'd gone the other way around, it might have been a I better... I knew Jojo Rabbit. Ah, oh, so... yeah. Nah, that's annoying. Well, we'll see you again next time. Look forward to it. Meanwhile, thank you very much, Daisy and Bruce. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. There we are. Well done, everybody. We made it into round two. Courtney and Lauren, I'd say you were quite lucky there, but very good to have you with us. Uh, Mira and Dave, our lowest scoring pair. Dave, our lowest scoring individual. So very, very well done there with Blue Jasmine. Our category for round two this afternoon is... US Geography. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and our US geography question concerns US states' miscellany. Richard. Yeah, in a moment, Zander's going to show you four categories of answers. We're looking for any state that fits into any of the following four categories, please. So any state of the US that fits into one of the following four. OK, so we'll put up the four categories. They remain for the whole round. Obviously, we won't be changing those halfway through, and you just have to throw out the name of a state that fits one of these. We have got... States containing the word new in their name, states smaller in area than the total area of Belgium, states which have a Pacific coastline, states with a compass point in their name. This is fun. OK, Ed? I'm going to go for uh, Delaware. Delaware says Ed. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Delaware. Delaware is right. Oh, it's a very good answer. <laughs> well done, indeed. <laughs> Delaware down to one. Uh, yeah, that fits into the category of uh, states that are smaller than Belgium, which is an interesting category. Isn't it? Isn't it, right? Because you don't yeah. really think about states in that way. It's, no. in fact, the second smallest state, Delaware. It's about the same size as Devon. Really? Oh, that's very sweet. Yeah. How but nice. you, you assume that all states yeah. are huge. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's more about how, how many times the United Kingdom could fit into one of the states, usually. Yeah. It? OK, there we are. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now, Mira. I think I'm going to go for Rhode Island. Rhode Island, says Mira. OK, let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 said Rhode Island. Rhode Island is right. One's the only score we have at the moment. And Rhode Island takes you to eight. Not bad. Not bad at all. And that's the smallest state. So there we go. Well played, Mira. There we are. Thank you very much indeed. Lauren. What are you going to go for? Those were both the ones I Do you know, I had did, in mind. Quite often people say that on Pointless when they, you know, the people lay claim to the, the lowest score, but I did actually see you and Courtney exchange Looking a look very there. Nice. So, yeah, I, 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 I believe you, is what I'm saying. I think I might just... I know it's right, but I don't know how high it's going to be. I think I'm just going to go for West Virginia. West Virginia, says Lauren. OK, let's see how many of our 100 said West Virginia. West Virginia, absolutely right. Well, eight's the high score, one's the low. 17 for West Virginia. Yeah, funnily enough, the westernmost point of Virginia is further west than the westernmost point of West Virginia. Wow. Wow. 
Wow. I wonder when they named the... I mean, not that... Well, by and large, West Virginia is to the west west, of Virginia. But uh, there's just a... Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. One, Ed. Very well done indeed. Best score of the past. Then eight is where we find Mira and Dave. Then 17 is where we find Courtney and Lauren. Um, So, yes, Courtney... You know what you have to do. Good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? Okay, so Courtney, remember, we're looking for any US states that fit into any of these categories. Okay, I've got a few. I'm not sure which one to go for. I think I'm going to say New Hampshire. New Hampshire, says Courtney. No red lines, you're the high scorers. Let's see how far down the column we get with New Hampshire. New Hampshire down to 21, takes your total up to 38. Very well played, yeah, named by John Mason after our very own Hampshire. That fits into two categories, it's in new and it's also smaller than Belgium. It's about six times the size of the real Hampshire, but smaller than Belgium. Mm. From which we can work out that Belgium is at least six times bigger than Hampshire. Mm. So that's some good information. That is good information. Um, everyone, go. can I just say, playing this round very well. It's quite tricky to work out yeah. what's low, but people are doing it very yeah. nicely, I think. Yeah. Thank you. There we are. Encouragement from the man there. Uh, Dave, what are you going to go for? We've got a target for you. 29 or less. 29 or less. So do I play safe or do I take a slight risk? I know there's a few states in that kind of northeast pocket that must be smaller than Belgium. So I'm going to take a slight risk. I think this is correct. Connecticut. Connecticut, says Dave. Let's see if that's right. Here's your red line coming in. Let's see if we can get below that with Connecticut. But it's right. Gets you through. Oh, it's very good indeed. It's pointless. Look at that. Very well done indeed, Dave. That means it adds £250 to today's jackpot, takes the total up to £4,750. Scores you nothing, leaves your score total at eight. Very well Very done. well played. What a risk to take. Very nicely done. Yes, uh, the third smallest state. So we've had the, the smallest three so far. Uh, slightly bigger than Northern Ireland. Very good. Thank you very much, Richard. Alex, now then, you need to score 36 or less. Yeah. I mean, for, that's for the game. For your own bragging rights, you need to score nothing. Yeah, I think nothing might be a bit of a stretch. I think all the smaller ones than Belgium have gone, I think. So... I'm going to go for a state which has a Pacific coastline and say Oregon. Oregon, says Alex, here is your red line. Let's see if we can get you below this red line with Oregon. Oregon's right. Yep, very well done. That goes down to six. Very strong indeed on the first podium. Take your total up to seven. I have to say, brilliant, you played everyone. That was uh, really, really uh, well handled. Uh, unlucky to be knocked out on 38 points there. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll go through all the different answers here because these are categories, there's four in the news and there's five in, uh, in everything else, uh, or six if you include uh, New Hampshire. So for the news, uh, New Jersey would have scored you 41, biggest score overall of anything. New Mexico would have scored you 26. We had New Hampshire and there's one other answer, which is New York, and that was easily the best answer, just six points for New York. I think people perhaps just think it's a city rather than a state. Now, those states smaller in size than Belgium, there's actually two left, one of which uh, in New England, Vermont, would have scored you one. And this one, again, if you told me this was like the third biggest state, I'd have been like, OK, uh, Massachusetts would have scored you two points. Very well done if you said Massachusetts. Um, now, those states with the Pacific coastline, Oregon, second best answer you could have given for that category, uh, 40 points for California, 11 points for Washington, Washington State, Six points, of course, for Hawaii. I know, Shut annoying, up. right? It's good. Like it. Even more annoying, four points, the best answer of all, Alaska. Ah. Which has kind of got a coastline with everything, hasn't it? Mm. Uh, and those states with the compass points, uh, Lauren, West Virginia, best answer you could have given. There isn't a better answer out there. North Dakota, 28. South Dakota, 26. Two people <laughs> going North Dakota and not bothering with South Dakota. Uh, 24 for North Carolina, 20 for South Carolina. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. That brings us to the end of our second round, which means we have to say goodbye to another pair, Courtney and Lauren. I'm afraid you are that pair. Nothing wrong with your score, as Richard just said. It's just one of those things. You happen to be our high scorers. So uh, we'll say goodbye for now, but we'll see you again next time. Look forward to it. Thank you so much, Courtney and Lauren. But for the remaining two pairs, it is now time for the head-to-head.
Congratulations, Mira and Dave, Ed and Alex. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £4,750. <laughs> but, as if that weren't enough, let's see if we can't boost it a little bit by finding a couple of pointless answers. Here's how it's going to work. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many female composers as they could. Richard? Yeah, six names on the board. Four of them will be uh, composers. Two of those will be pointless answers. There will also be two fakes up there as well. Try and avoid those £250 for every pointless answer you can find. There we go. So feel free to chat amongst all four of you if any of you has any particular knowledge to impart here. Uh, here we go. Here come our potential female composers. We've got Sarah Morpeach, Caroline Shaw, Florence Price, Isabella Leonarda, Hildegard von Bingen, and Rosina Almaviva. There. Spot any red herrings there? We are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> they all look like they, they look... could easily be female yeah, composers, surprisingly. I'm trying to spot the red herrings on there, but I can't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no one's like a, a footballer yeah. or something. Mira and Dave, it is over to you. Who are you going to nominate as a pointless female composer? I fancy the bottom one. Yeah, why not? I'm Rosina going to add to Alma that. Viva? Going to go for Rosina Almaviva. Let us find out if she is pointless. Oh. <laughs> OK, I'm afraid not a female composer. Now, Ed and Alex? Uh, we'll go for the top one. Sarah Moore Sarah Peach. Peach. Sarah Moore Peach. Let's see if she is a female composer. Oh. No. Well done, no, though. <laughs> that takes a special kind of talent. You managed to find the two made-up female composers. Um, how were you on this as your, as well, your, your role of classic um, event? Sarah presenter. Morpeach, I know, is a presenter on Radio 3. And Rosina Almaviva is the countess in The Marriage of Figaro. Do you know the work of uh, any of these ladies? Well, Florence Price I've heard of. Uh, quite right, she would have scored two points. Um, I'm going to say Isabella Leonardo I've heard of more than I've heard of the other two. I'll tell you what, he's very, very good. She scores a point and the other two oh, are pointless answers. Very well done. That's nice. So Caroline Shaw and Hildegard von Bingen are the pointless answers. Very well done, if you said that. Thank you very much indeed. Well, bad luck. We weren't able to find any pointless answers there, but we've all learned a bit about female composers. And <laughs> frankly, there's lots to learn there. Some exciting names. So uh, very well done for taking us through that journey. Uh, let's play the head-to-head. First pair to win two questions. We'll be playing for that jackpot. Let us not forget £4,750. Don't want to let that slip through your hands. You are now allowed to confer, which is great. Best of luck to both pairs. Our first question is all about... Nuts on trees. <laughs> Richard. Yep. I'm going to show you five pictures now of culinary nuts, uh, but as they look when they're growing on trees, we'll give you the first letters of their names as well. But what are these nuts, please? Name that nut. Name the nut. OK, so here we go. Five of them. As ever, cluster of five. A, C. Oh, it's a bit, it's a bit like when you see, uh, I don't know, but famous people in a family context, isn't it? <laughs> you think, hold on, yeah, oh, yeah sort of vaguely familiar, nice, but... yeah. Uh, B, A. C, P. D, P. And E, W. Hmm. Wow. So used to seeing them just in little bags. I know. From the supermarket. I know. Oh, they're very beautiful. I didn't know they were real. No. I thought they were made of wood. I thought they were like crisps. They made them in some factory and... Greg Wallace could show us around it one day. <sighs> Maybe wow. he will. Um, now, Mira and Dave, you're our golden couple, so you get to go first. I don't think I'm going to Pistachio. Um, I think we're going to go for D, Pecan. D, Pecan. D, Pecan, say Mira and Dave. Now, Ed and Alex, what are you going to go for? Well, more importantly, do you want to talk us through the board first? Um, I think I might be able to. I think A is Cashew, B is Almond, 
E is walnut. And I think what we're going to go for, because I think pecan's pretty good, is C. I think it's pistachio. OK, pistachio. So it's all the peas. We've got pecan versus pistachio. I've always wondered who was going to win between them. Uh, Mira and Dave, let's go for pecan first. That's what you're saying for D. How many of our 100 said that? Pecan is absolutely right. Down, that goes to 33. Very well done indeed. Meanwhile, Ed and Alex have gone for pistachio. Pistachio there for C. I mean, yes, I guess. Uh, let's see how many of our 100 people said pistachio. Let's see if it's right. It is right. And it wins you the point. Oh. Down he goes to 24. Very strong indeed. Ed and Alex, after one question, you're up 1 0. Well played, Jens. Yeah, I didn't spot pistachio. No. Yeah, I couldn't. I didn't get it. It's the best answer on the board as well. So we'll look at A. We, we know it's. Uh, Cashew and uh, would have scored you 27. But can you, looking at that picture, work out what four of our 100 said for that? Bean? <laughs> uh, coffee? No. <Nope>. Carrot? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I yeah. guess if you, don't, if, you, if you don't see the, you know, the size of them, I mean, what can you do? What can you? Um, what? B. Four of our 100 said acorn. Uh, but uh, quite right, it is almond, and almond would have scored you 50. And a walnut right at the end there would have scored you 65. Very nice indeed. Thank you so much. OK, well, here comes your second question. Now, Mira and Dave, you have to win this one. Stay in the game. Ed and Alex, slight advantage here because they get to answer it first. Best of luck. Our second question is all about... Romans. Richard. Five clues related in some way to the word Romans here. Let's reveal the five clues, and here they come. We've got... Premier League football club bought by Roman Abramovich in 2003, a firework that produces a continuous shower of sparks punctuated by coloured balls of fire. Kieran Culkin plays Roman Roy in this TV series, which began in 2018. The 1953 film for which Audrey Hepburn won the Oscar for Best Actress in a Leading Role and Liti Joseph Anua is the real name of this WWE wrestler who is also nicknamed The Big Dog. OK, Ed and Alex will go first. It's a film with a Roman holiday. Yeah? Yeah. OK, uh, I think we're going to go for the film with Audrey Hepburn, which I think is a Roman holiday. Roman holiday, say Ed and Alex. Uh, Mira and Dave, do you want to talk us through that board? Uh, I think the top one is Chelsea. And the next one down is Roman Candle. And then I don't know the other two. So I think we'll have to go for Roman Candle. OK, so we have Roman Holiday and Roman Candle. Ed and Alex have gone for Roman Holiday. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that for the Audrey Hepburn film. Roman Holiday, absolutely right. There we go, down to 15. 15. Let's see how we do with Roman Pant, Amira and Dave. 15 is what you've got to beat. Roman Campbell is good. Can it go? Oh, no! 33 for Roman Campbell, which means Ed and Alex. Very well done indeed. After only two questions, you're straight through to the final 2 0. Yeah, a couple of answers up there which would have beaten Roman Holiday. The top one wouldn't have beaten it. That is, of course, Chelsea. Um, would have scored you 31, but the other two would have beaten it. Kieran Culkin uh, is Roman Roy. Uh, succession. In succession. It's brilliant. If you've not seen it, it would have scored you one point. And the uh, bottom one there. I'm very <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm out of my depth that. here. Roman Reigns. Roman, Roman Reigns would have scored Ra you three oh, Roman points. Reigns. Yeah. Roman Reigns. Thank you very much indeed. Well, the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. Oh, Mira and Dave, once again this has happened. You've just been stunning the whole way through the show, <laughs> pulling lovely low scores. And, in fact, in your case, Dave, a pointless answer out of the bag. And you've just been pipped once again. Mind you, come back next time. Who knows, maybe the jackpot will be even bigger. <laughs> yeah, you didn't hear me say that, Ed <laughs> Alex, by the way. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we'll see you again next time. Look forward to it. Mira and Dave. <laughs> but for Ed and Alex, it is now time for the pointless final. Congratulations, Ed and Alex. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. Oh, 
<laughs> you now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £4,750. Well, I mean, I'm delighted you've come all the way through because you've played an absolute blinder today. That's great. It's only fitting that you should be here. It's a shame, though. We didn't, we didn't get to know you better. No, you know, funny. just being on one show. Um, so, yes, you have to choose your category to try and win that jackpot, £4,750. What do you think would be your best shot at that? We've been quite lucky because film being the first round was one of our favourite subjects and, and geography is, is one of Alex's best. So... We were yeah. quite pleased. So if either of those could come up again... OK, well, it's very gracious of you to say that. You, you could have pretended you know everything. <laughs> yeah, I think um, it's about to be found out. So OK, <laughs> right, OK. can't hide anymore. Well, here we go. There are four categories for you to choose from, and here we have got... Decades of the Turner Prize, Oliver Cromwell, Emmerdale, football in the 2010s. Yeah, what do we think? I think decades yeah. of Turner Prize, we're going to struggle. Oliver Cromwell... Pff. Emmerdale, definitely not. I think football, it's probably football. I think football. I think we'll go football in the 2010s. OK. Please. I think you've got a real chance here if you know about football. We're looking for any of the following, please. We're looking for any player named in any FIFA, FIFA Pro Men's World 11 from 2010 to 2019. That's the, uh, the best 11 players of the year as voted by uh, members. We are looking for any national team who played at a World Cup men's or women's from 2010 to 2019, please. Or we are looking for any club team who played in the Men's Champion League knockout stages, that's the last 16 onwards, uh, in the 2010s. So those players in a FIFA Pro uh, Men's World 11, the national teams in the World Cup, or the club teams in the Champions League knockout stages. Very, very best of luck, gents. OK, well, as always, you have up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yeah, ready. OK, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK, footballers, so... we've got Perlo, uh, you've got um, Buffon, you've got um, uh, Hazard, De Bruyne. Yeah, uh, and then we you've got Wells. kind of uh, Thiago yeah. Silva, you've got Lucas. Uh, I think then okay, so national teams, teams. Paraguay. Were you talking? Were you talking about that before the before? Yeah. Before Par Shai. Paraguay, Iran. Like, do you think like San Marino or anyone like no, that? They wouldn't. They through. wouldn't have been in the World Cup. They wouldn't have made it through for sure. Okay. Um, I think Otherwise, Paraguay. Okay. Um, yeah, Paraguay. I think, or Uruguay. Uh, one of those two. Montenegro. If they made it through the group. I don't know if they've got through. But uh, club teams who played in Champions League knockout stages. So Roma, Roma, Juventus. No, we've got to think Lyon, Marseille, like Schalke, okay, or like yeah, Schalke. someone. Uh, Leipzig. RC Leipzig. RC Leipzig's not a bad answer. Red Bull team. Um, yes, I can go Leipzig. Leipzig. I can go Paraguay. Yeah. Ten seconds and left. And I can we go, and then we go Rogue. Team. Might as well John. They've definitely got through. OK, let me back in, mate. Love it. Let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, <laughs> there we are. Look, the time's just running out there. Uh, sounds like you've got three answers. What are you going to give me? Um, we're going to go for club teams who played in the men's team. We're going to go for uh, Red Bull Leipzig. Red Bull Leipzig. Um, we're going to go for national teams played at World Cup. We're going to go for Paraguay. Paraguay. And a bit of a gamble and go for Azerbaijan. And Azerbaijan in the same category. Which is pretty rogue. OK. Of those three, which do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? Uh, I reckon Paraguay. OK. Yeah. Paraguay, least likely? Leipzig. And then middle, we'll go with uh, Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. OK. Yeah. Very good. Which I think is a bit of a... <laughs> Just a Hail Mary. Hail, that's a Hail Mary. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We've got Red Bull Leipzig, Azerbaijan and Paraguay. Well, very, very best of luck. £4,750. It's just turned into quite a nice jackpot. What would you like to do with it if you won that? Ed, I'm going to so ask I'll you start, first. start, because I, I think my answer's a little less wholesome than my brother's. Uh, <laughs> I was saying, when, we, you know, when we're able to, I would like to, uh, to, to go out for a meal or, or some drinks with, with friends and, and celebrate... Uh, in a bit of style. That sounds wholesome enough. Um, Alex, what about you? I think my girlfriend would like it if we spent it on our new kitchen, but I think more likely I might upgrade my motorbike. OK, fair enough. So... That's an honest answer there. Uh, sorry about the kitchen, though. I don't, well, I don't know. You can, you can argue that amongst yourselves. OK. Perhaps some nice mixer taps on the motorbike, something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good compromise. Idea. It's an excellent idea. Yeah, Corian worktop. Yeah. yeah, lovely. Corian worktop on the, on on the, the bike. On the bike. Oh, lovely. Very nice. Right, Ed and Alex, your first answer was Red Bull Leipzig. In this case, we were looking for club teams who played in the Men's Champions League knockout stages in the 2010s. A Red Bull Leipzig, if it is pointless, wins you £4,750. No, bad luck. I'm afraid incorrect. 
Let's go with your next answer, Azerbaijan. In this case, it's national teams who played at the World Cup in the 2010s. Azerbaijan, is it right? How many people said it? For £4,750, is it pointless? No, bad luck. <laughs> OK, fingers crossed for Paraguay, your third and final answer. This is the one you put last. You thought was your best shot at a pointless answer. Let's hope it's... Well, let's hope it's right, shall we? Let's <laughs> yeah. do one step at a time. A hat trick of... Uh, for £4,750, is Paraguay pointless? Paraguay is right. Well, Red Bull Leipzig turned out to be incorrect. Azerbaijan turned out to be incorrect. Paraguay, absolutely right. We're now going into single figures. Still going down with Paraguay. Still going down. Yeah! Very well done indeed. <laughs> yes! oh. Excellent. Legend. Well, that's a wonderful <laughs> night out and oh. lovely mixer taps. That's just brilliant. Fantastic. Congratulations. Yes, Paraguay thanks. was a pointless answer. You are taking home today's jackpot of £4,750. Very well done. We so often give away these uh, these jackpots on Sportland because the 100 don't know anything about it. And if you know football, you know everything. I thought you were going to give three incorrect answers there. I, Having I given about so 30 correct pointless answers during your 60 oh, seconds really? as well. Virtually every footballer whose name you gave me was a pointless answer. Buffon was a pointless answer. Eden Hazard, Thiago Silva was a pointless answer. Uh, some of the countries as well, Iran, you mentioned that was a pointless answer. Schalke was a pointless answer for the... Uh, and yet you still managed almost... <laughs> <laughs> almost to avoid all of them. Brilliantly done. Very well played, gents. I'll take you through the pointless answers in the different categories. We'll start with the footballers. Uh, Addison is a pointless answer. There's Aidan Nazar. Paul Pogba, Zlatan Ibrahimovic is a pointless answer. Uh, Carlos Poyol, you mentioned, is a pointless. Uh, David De Gea, David Luiz, David Villa, Gerard Pique. Uh, Kylian Mbappe is a pointless answer. Uh, Luka Modric is a pointless answer. Nemanja Vidic and Godo Kante. This is why sports rounds are great for pointless answers, because <laughs> these are some of the most famous footballers in the world. Uh, Wesley Schneider as well. Loads of pointless answers there. Now, countries who played at a World Cup or national teams, at least. Australia, Colombia, Morocco, there's Paraguay, which you gave us. Uh, you could add Algeria, Bosnia, Herzegovina. There's Panama, North Korea, New Zealand, Jamaica, Iran, Honduras, Greece, Ghana, Equatorial, Guinea, Ecuador, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Saudi Arabia, Senegal, Serbia, Slovakia, Slovenia, South Korea, Switzerland and Tunisia. Very well done if you said any of those. And the uh, knockout teams... There's uh, Atletico Madrid, Benfica, Roma, Serco. I mean, there's so many big teams. Bordeaux, uh, Copenhagen, CSKA are in there. Fiorentina, Galatasaray, uh, by Leverkusen, Lyon are in there. Marseille, Olympiacos, PSV, Sevilla, Shakhtar Donetsk, uh, Wolfsburg as well, Zenit, St. Petersburg. Loads and loads of pointless answers there. It's an absolute, uh, what a beautiful category to pick. Very well done. Uh, if you've got any of those at home, sorry you don't win the money. And congratulations in the studio. Thank you very much indeed, Richard, and thanks once again to our winning players, Ed and Alex, who take away today's jackpot of £4,750. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you. Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye.